Hi, I'm Ruth. Welcome back to my sewing room. And um, I have a quilt here that I have attached binding most of the way around on, on one side. I've attached it. And now I've come to the two loose ends and I've had people ask, how on earth do you join these and make it fit perfectly? So that's what we're going to do here today in this video. I'm going to show you how to do that. And um, first of all, I'm going to have to turn the camera so that it's pointing at the sewing machine and um, show you how to trim this to the right size so that you can do what we need to do. We're going to join it in a diagonal fashion so that it looks just like all the rest of the binding all the way around. Okay, so hold on while I turn the camera. Okay, here we are. And I'm going to try and make this stay up without falling. Um, and I will put this up here where you can see it. So, the first thing is trimming it to the right length. And what we want to do is take the scissors and um, from extra pieces that you have or from this extra length, we've left, I usually leave 6 to 8 inches, 10 if you like, but sometimes we're a little short on binding, so you don't have to go making a whole extra yard of it. But I just need to chop off a little bit, and I'm going to cut about this much off. Okay, and all this is for is to use as a guide as to the two and a half inch width and we're going to take and pin it anywhere in between where we left off. Here's where I left off sewing and I just like to leave a big gap so I have room to work. There's no rule about how much you have to leave. So now I'm going to pin this right along the edge. It's only going to be temporary. It's kind of a placeholder but it's going to show us how much to trim off of this piece first. So we're going to take this piece and we're going to line it up along the edge here and go all the way to the edge of this piece and that's where we're going to trim the floppy piece. Okay, so what I usually do is I'll just take my scissors and I've got enough hanging down that I can see where the edge is so I just run it right up the edge you want to be pretty exact on this. And I'm not usually doing this in midair. So I've noticed I'm just, actually, I'm just exactly where I need to be. That's perfect. I thought maybe I would be off just a smidge. But that's perfect. So now we'll just leave that go for a minute. And we'll take this other side. And we'll do exactly the same thing. So we're lining it up along the edge. I'm trying to be really careful because we're in midair. Do this laying down on your table. It's a lot easier. And if you kind of can fold it back on that edge and then make sure that the top is lined up, that gives you a good place for your scissors. Just kind of finger press it and then slide your scissors up in there and whoosh. Okay. So what that gives us is a piece that, re this piece reaches that outer side and this piece reaches the alternate outer side. And what we're going to do now, we're going to remove our placeholder. We don't need it anymore. But we're going to join these two pieces right sides together the same way that we join binding when we need to make a long length of it. So we open it up and we lay. Now make sure you don't get it twisted around. I've done that before. We're going to lay right sides together like that corner to corner, edge to edge. So you want to get really exact in that corner. And I use two pins going diagonally. So I'll do one here. And sometimes I'll do this in and out because it gives it a little more pin space. And then I'm going to do another one down here because we're going to sew across it in the middle. One, two, one, two. Okay. And if you have a little ruler handy, which would have been a really good idea for me to get before turning on this camera. <laughs> I usually have one sitting here, but it seems to have wandered off. So I'm going to put a little dot right here. Since I'm on the back side of the fabric, it's not going to show. But that's where that corner is. Okay, and then here's a little dot over here. 
I happen to have a little extra piece of binding and we know that it's perfectly straight, right? <laughs> so I'm going to use it as a ruler. I don't recommend you trying to do this on your sewing machine. Leave this to the professionals. <laughs> Kidding. All right. So that is effectively my sewing line. All right. Now I'm going to sew it. And this can get a little tricky, but if you've left yourself enough, like I did, it'll be okay. But you can sometimes find yourself in a predicament where you don't really have a lot of fabric to twist it around. All right, let's get this puppy going. There we go. And then we're going to take our pins out. And we want to cut this off, leaving about a quarter of an inch um, pressing allowance. And that's really all it's for, is to minimize the bulk that you have underneath. If you have the luxury of doing this on a table, you can use a ruler to measure. I just kind of eyeballed it. And now I'm going to turn this so I can finger press this open. You always want to open this because it does cut down on the bulk that we're going to have. And here I need to cut off my little tail. Now here's what's going to happen. As we already had the rest of it pressed, when we pull it out like this, look at that. It fits exactly, and we are now ready to sew it down. I'll just put a couple pins in here. And I'm really just doing this to uh, set a good example because I don't always pin before I sew. But I just want you to see that it is a good exact snug fit from end to end from the where I left off sewing right here. I don't need a pin there. And so I'm just going to sew it down now from here to here. And we'll be ready to flip it over and do our hand stitching. That's really all there is to it. Give it a try. You'll enjoy it. And then come on back for some other videos. Look forward to seeing you. Bye-bye.